in this video, we're gonna be going over Zoho Projects templates in detail. We always really recommend using templates if you're gonna dive in on Zoho Projects as it does make the application a lot more manageable. So in this video, we're gonna go through creating a new template. We're gonna take a look at some of the template templates that Zoho has. We'll go through some of the common configuration options and settings within a template. And then we'll actually show you how to launch it and even how to launch it from within CRM related to a deal. So before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. If it sparks any questions, uh, feedback or additional video requests, leave those down in the comments section. And as always, if you need some help with your Zoho install, just head on over to zanata.com, click on book a meeting, and we'll be talking about how we can help in no time. So with that, let us jump on in. Projects, of course, this is a big application, tons and tons of functionality. When you launch a new project, you really don't want to be starting from scratch. So it takes a long time. There's a lot of objects to create, milestones, task lists, tasks, you know, the dependencies, the due dates. So even if you're the type of business who maybe there's a decent amount of variability between the different types of engagements that you have, even if you can make a template that's like 60, 70 percent accurate, it's still going to save you a lot of time. So under the projects tab and then under project templates, here is where we can create a new template. We're just gonna call this our example template. Now, if you have some existing projects, let's say you like did an implementation, you built the project from scratch and you're like, hey, that went great. <laughs> let's turn that into a template. You can do that from this choose from projects. Under the description, there's kind of a rich text field to enter some descriptive information. These can be kind of nice if there's like a templated set of instructions or, you know, maybe if you're launching this from CRM, you can add like CRM info here to this section. Your task layout, this is just the layout of the tasks itself that are going to be in this project. So that's going to define the available statuses, the custom fields, each of those. Down below, of course, we can set the budget and budget type. So budget type here, it gets really nitty gritty. We're not going to go too far down this rabbit hole. Essentially, you can either do fixed budgets based on projects, milestones, tasks, and users. Then we can do for each of those different types of objects. We can make it based on the total project hours, the sum of staff hours, some type of fixed price, or some type of billable task hours. Again, we're not going to worry too much about the budgeting video or the, the budgeting in this video. Um, I'm going to make a whole separate video going through the budgeting options because, again, it is a lot. Um, <laughs> it's just a lot to get through. Now, I do want to highlight here, right down in the bottom right, the sneaky little option here for browse templates. So if I click on browse templates, it takes me to an awesome menu. And Zoho, if you're listening, um, make this more obvious that this is here. They have a ton of templates for your templates. Right. So if you're looking to do event planning, digital marketing, manufacturing, maintenance, I mean, like we're not going to go, I'm not just going to read the names of all of these, but there are a ton of different options here for pre-built templates, which you can launch and then work from there. And I really recommend that you do this when you're getting into projects. I know I've said it a couple of times. It's a complicated application. There's a lot of settings. Right. Like I'm mentioning, I could do a whole 20 minute tip video just on budgeting in Zoho projects and I will. But with these templates, these can be a great way to just get yourself started. When you start with a blank page, it's just a bit overwhelming. So I always recommend starting with a template. I'm going to go ahead and use software development because I am a software developer and this is the most natural for me. You're going to want to figure out what is the closest to what you're looking to accomplish and then kind of work with it from there, but I'm gonna click use template. We're gonna go ahead and access the template and take a look. So here we'll see the primary list of tasks that are related to this template. Now, before we jump into tasks, I'm just gonna give you an overview of kind of each of the different relevant objects that are gonna go into making a project template work. And I'm gonna start at the top of the list. The top of the list are essentially milestones. These are the overarching phases that go in to a particular project. This template, they've broken it down into the grooming or planning stage. That sounds weird to me, so I'm just gonna name it planning stage. <laughs> that sounds a bit more natural. Then it would be the development stage, 
And then it would be the QA and testing phase, right? So I'm going to rename each of these to be phases just because, again, I like to keep things simple and keep them consistent. Now, the important thing about each milestone is that they're going to have a start after and a duration. Now, when we launch this as a project, I'll show you what changes when this goes live. But what we're going to be thinking about a lot with the template is how many days does it start after, meaning when I launch the project, we're going to start this work two days later, right? And then it's going to take some number of days to be completed, right? So if I wanted to make a timeline shorter or longer, I can just enter those into these duration sections. So here you'd basically look and you want to make sure these kind of dovetail together where you'd say, hey, we're going to start this after two days. Then we're going to have a 60 day duration. So this next one, I can probably start after 62 days, right? Maybe I want to give myself one little buffer day and I'll say 63, um, right? And then so on and so forth. You'll be adjusting the start after and the durations. Now, within each particular milestone, we have more records. So we've got task lists, which will be the next object that goes into our project template. Now, a task list is a bit simpler than a milestone. It doesn't have due dates. It doesn't have deadlines. It's really just a bucket that we're going to put some tasks in. So within the planning phase, we're basically grouping these into some preliminary activities and then requirement analysis. But again, these aren't getting a start after a duration, some of that more granular data. Instead, they're really just an organizational tool. Now, lastly, within a particular task list, we'll have a set of tasks. And now these tasks, similar to a milestone, are going to have that start after and that duration, right? So one day after we launch the project, we're going to start this task. It should take no longer than five days, right? And so you'll see each of these is basically cascading one after another to make sure that we get things done in a timely fashion. Those are kind of the big three, right? We've got milestone, We've got task lists, and then we've got a bunch of tasks underneath those. From there, once I've kind of organized things into those three organizational objects, the next thing I want to do is really start to take a look at the dependencies and my Gantt chart. So to jump into kind of Gantt charts and dependencies here, there are a few ways to do it. I can open up an individual task, and I can come down to the dependency section, and I can add things as a predecessor and a successor, meaning a task that comes before and a task that comes after. That's not how I like to do this. Um, going one by one like that is going to be really hard for me, at least, to keep track of mentally and kind of remember like, oh, how are things linking? What's the start after? So here, I like to just go into the task list and go to the Gantt chart and then build my dependencies here. This is a preference I hold pretty strongly. Um, that this is the right way to do this. So as you're looking at your various tasks, right, we want to make sure that things that can't happen or we, that we can't start on until we finish the previous are linked with dependencies. So in this case, these first two tasks are actually a perfect example. So we can't really get sign off on the feature list until the feature list is done. Right. So we might want to grab this task. Right. So this bar here basically represents the start after being one day and then it taking five days. And we can just click and drag to basically create a dependency that says that we're not going to start task two until task one is completed. The nice thing about this, and we'll take a look at the dependency settings in a moment, if this task is to get moved back the following task will also be moved back. So if we're running behind, if we're running ahead, right, this makes a lot of your start after and durations or your start dates and due dates once you actually launch the project, it makes them much more dynamic. I like to have lots of dependencies set up here because this is really the big power of Zoho projects. Reality is, if your projects don't fit into like a Gantt chart approach, it might not be the right tool for you because this is really what it's best at doing and it does a phenomenal job at it. So here I might go through and just create a sequence of dependencies that kind of link together my tasks so that I have that relationship between completion and starting of tasks where there is a required order of operations. Now, what we'll see if I click in, you will see the kind of predecessor and successor again. I want to highlight just one set here of settings. These are a little sneaky and a little hidden. So there are different dependency types. Uh, Zoho just puts them in as acronyms. 
FS is the most commonly used. That is a finish to start dependency, meaning I need to finish task one to start task two. You can also look at like a start to start, meaning like I can't start on one until I've started on the other. I can't finish one until I've finished the other. So maybe I can actually start getting feature list sign off before I have the total list completed, right? So this one, you might actually be able to get away with a finish to finish and get it done a little bit quicker. Start to finish, I almost never use this one. Uh, I don't really see a scenario where I would have a, a task that is a predecessor rely on the successor being completed in order to finish it. You can also do a lag. So if I wanted to add a couple days between this, I can add two days, which will then lag this second task, right? So if we're like, hey, we're going to get our feature list and then we're going to take a couple days to make sure we feel good about it, then send it out. Honestly, though, I don't really use lags very often, um, mostly because I would rather just make the predecessor task longer right? Rather than have this arbitrary lag that goes between them. For me, it just makes more sense to do it that way. But again, it, it all kind of depends on exactly what you're looking to get accomplished. So some of these things, again, they're, they're just going to depend on your preferences and how exactly you need them to work. So from here, again, you're kind of just going down this entire list that you've created and adjusting out any of these start dates and dependencies. I'll tell you again, like I mentioned, when I'm setting one of these up, I do a lot of it just from this Gantt chart view. Um, rather than coming in and like looking at my list, right, and going, okay, so this is 45 days, I'm going to add five days. So that means this technically needs to be 50 days. And then I'm going to, it's just, it gets to be a lot when you do it like that. I like the visual view here of the Gantt chart because it just allows me to get this done a lot more quickly and a lot more accurately without a lot of pain and suffering involved. Now, a couple other things, though, as we look at these, at, when you have a project template, you can actually pre-assign tasks either to teams or to individuals. You can add tags. You can set the baseline status that anything should be when you go to launch a project. And then one of the most important things is we can set for any particular task if it should be billable and what our expected work hours are that it should take to get this done. Right. So we can say either total work hours, work hours per day. I generally do total work hours just because like if you have a task that takes over the course of five days, it just gets a little funky. You're assuming like the same number of work hours a day versus saying, hey, this is going to take me two days. It's going to take four hours, might be three and one, might be two and two. It just gets a little simpler if we just assign it as like a um, standard number of hours instead. So make sure to go in there and add these work hours. It's a pretty important step um, because when you do this, you'll be able to use your future workload allocation reporting much more accurately. One of the cool things about projects is we have these templates. Let's say an average project takes us three months. We can be doing 20 or 30 different projects at a time. And as long as we've set these work hours as estimates in our templates, when I go ahead and launch a project, I can actually forecast what my future workload is going to look like, right? Which is a super valuable tool. And again, one of the main reasons for using a project management tool that's designed in the way that Zoho Projects is. With that, I think we've covered kind of the core elements here of adding your project templates. A couple more little quick things that I guess realizing I should show you this. When you need to add any task lists, I like to go in a group by milestone. So I can see each of my milestones and task lists within them. And then if I need to add additional task lists, I can do so. I can add them within a particular milestone. Um, so here we can do this. And then I can add tasks within those, right? So just from this view, right, I can come in and add any of the additional tasks and task lists um, or even add additional milestones. I normally recommend actually going to the Milestones tab to add this part, just so you can then, again, go to my Gantt chart and kind of see how these look on a timeline basis. But that is kind of the core of setting up the template. So now let's actually go ahead and launch a template and see exactly what it's going to look like. To launch a template, I'm just going to go to my projects list. I'm going to show this two ways. So first, I'm going to launch one from here inside of projects. Then I'm going to launch one from inside of CRM because I know a lot of you out there are also using Zoho CRM. So here, I'm just going to go to new projects. Inside of my templates, I can grab from my example template. I can just click on use. 
Now, really important step here, project start date. Do you remember all that talk about start after and duration? Start after is going to refer to this start date. So if you're launching this and you know we're not actually going to start it until Monday, post date the start date or you're just going to be behind the entire time, right? So make sure that this is accurate. This is really, really important. It sets the cadence for the entirety of the project. Here down below, again, we can add things to groups. We can define budget settings. These are going to pull in by default from the project. But of course, you can make those choices if it needs to be different for an individual record. Uh, we can choose any tabs. Again, a lot of this stuff is pretty baseline. And then you can choose if a project should be private or public, meaning should only people that are added be able to see it, or can this be visible to anybody in the project's organization? I'm going to go ahead and add this. It might just take a moment or two here. It doesn't really take two or three minutes. We'll be right back when it's done. Just kidding. It's done. Um, that was very fast. So here, now that we've launched this, we'll see some differences, right? Like I mentioned, rather than having a start after and a duration, once we launch the project, that gets turned into a start date and a due date, right? And now on our Gantt chart, it's all based on real dates, right? And I can actually see, okay, here's my milestone deadlines. Let me scroll left here. Here's my milestone, right? On my Gantt chart. Here's my task list based on the start and end date of tasks within that list. And then here are my tasks. Like I mentioned, again, if we start moving or bumping these uh, due dates and start dates for tasks, uh, dependencies will update accordingly. That is launching a project here. The other way to do it, of course, would be via the CRM. Um, this works very similarly. So if I'm inside of a deal and let's say I'm ready to launch a project, I can go ahead and click plus. Say, you know, example CRM project, pick my template, pick my start date same settings, right? You'll see this is all very similar. Uh, maybe I'll make it public again just to be consistent. Here you can actually add any users um, from your organization or from the client's organization. So if you have like a related contact and you want them to have access to the project, you can add them here. Um, I'm not going to do that in this case because that is a fake email address, just going to bounce. And then I'll click save. Just like that, again, same exact process. So now I've got this project created and associated to my CRM deal record. Again, as an overall summary here, go to those project templates. I really recommend starting with an example and kind of working backwards from there. Uh, make sure that inside of your template, you've got your Gantt chart lined up. Make sure you've got your work hours assigned just so you can get that workload forecasting. Play around a little. I always like to launch one when I don't need it just to take a look at it once it's real and see if it lines up with my expectations. But from there, you should be good to go. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. If you're seeing this part, it means you made it to the end. So give me that like. Um, if it sparks any questions, feedback, or additional video requests, leave those in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as possible every single week. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.